So today I have the G2 Gypsy on the hoist. I'm going to show everyone the flexitor suspension uh, and how it works and just kind of go over its operation a little bit, its uh, pluses and minuses, the good and the bad with it. Um, I've also got the hardtop on the Gypsy now, getting ready for winter. I'm waiting on some channel from the States for the window glass, glass run channel, they call it. But yeah, top's doing good. I This time I painted the back window frame the same color as the cab because it, it used to be black uh, when I restored it last time and it really stood out. I look at photos and you just see this big black frame kind of hanging out there. So now it kind of blends in nice. Uh, these have what are called flexitor torsion springs. They are mounted inside this housing. There's a, a giant bushing on this side, giant bushing on this side. It's vulcanized to the inside of this, this beam. And then this tube inside is vulcanized to the inside of the bushing with a flange right here. And then the swing arm or control arm, trailing arm is mounted to that. This swings up and down, obviously. <clears throat> you can see there's quite a bit of travel. Uh, that's the snubber up there for when it bottoms out. Suspension's hanging right now. The differentials are mounted up to the frame. They're kind of tucked up higher than on a solid axle vehicle, which gives them a little bit of an advantage there for clearance. The control arms, the, they're very robust, very thick. The steel is uh, 3 16 to a quarter inch on, on these, and you can see it's fully boxed and welded. Uh, they're, they're very tough. The, uh, the G1, uh, when they first built it, they made these arms a little too light and they had trouble with them cracking. So they, they really went uh, a lot heavier on the, on the steering knuckles, uh, the swivel pins, everything got heavier. The steering improved. They they took the steering box from here, where it had a drag link that went to a, a steering arm over here. Uh, they put the they put the steering box up high instead, and it's attached to what I call a relay rod. And then the tie rod ends are tucked up here, safely behind everything. They're up out of the way where they won't get hit. The frame on these vehicles, the Gypsy, is a fully boxed oval chassis. It's made out of two pieces, like a U-channel this way and a U-channel this way, then fully welded all down the sides. It's airtight. They also used a, a Armstrong um, dual action shock absorber. There's a piston in on each side here with a little rack that's uh, this lever twists a gear and, and the the pistons move back and forth against the oil. You can drain the oil to change it and there's an adjustment on the top. You take a cap off and you can you can adjust the damping on each each corner, which is a pretty cool feature. I almost wonder why they don't still use this style of uh, shock absorber because it's um, it's just so compact. But I'm sure it's a lot more expensive to make than a a regular shock absorber that you see on pretty much everything else in the world. Only downside I would say with the independent suspension, you got more moving parts, just like any, you know. Uh, modern vehicles, there's a constant velocity joint here and here. These have U-joints, slip yoke, um, grease fittings on every moving part. So you got a few few more things to grease but these ride really nice on a on a gravel road like a, a pothole road uh, or a washboard where a leaf spring vehicle 
uh, tends to skip around. Um, I've, I've had Land Cruisers and Broncos and pickup trucks. And when you're driving down the logging road, you know, doing 40 mile an hour, uh, you hit those washboards, especially on a corner, and, and you're, you're just about passing yourself because the back end kicks out. This thing always tracks so smooth and straight on a washboard road, and, and that's what they were designed for is uh, to move fast over rough terrain. That was the idea behind the independent suspension. What I did, uh, if you have a Gypsy and you got a G1 or a G2 and you're doing a restoration, or even if you want to just improve your braking system, uh, at least for the park brake, um, I took the, the cables from here. They used to come down through here and they both hung down right where they're, you know, gonna get caught on things. Um, so they had been hooked several times and you can even see how these brackets have been bent because you might back into something or catch a rock on there. <clears throat> and um, so what I did, and, and this is, I got the idea from the G4, it's it's a newer vehicle. They, they must have decided they needed to improve this park brake system. So they, they put the cables right through the trailing arm and then put the rotated the backing plate so the levers up there and that way the the mechanism is up out of the the muck and the salt and the everything work because it used to be down here now it's tucked up safe up there so you have a lot less cable uh, you don't have the stretch of the cable and you don't have this uh, bracket here flexing when you when you pull the brake on so it takes a lot of the sponginess out of the park brake it makes it really nice and solid and when you pull the brake on it, it literally lock up the back wheels where the old one just didn't have that capacity no matter what I did to it. Cool feature on, that I've never seen on other vehicles is uh, grease fittings on the park brake cables. The, the original park brake cables were in this vehicle and they had been greased regularly so they still worked perfectly fine other than the fact that they'd been hooked on things and bent. Flexitor unit here in the left rear and the right rear. The only thing I find with this Gypsy being a, a pickup style with, without the weight in the back, it, it's very light in the back. And um, because, you know, they're designed to carry some weight, uh, it doesn't articulate very well on twisty stuff like it. You mean, it, you mean it's flexing and everything, but you can lift a back wheel pretty easy and make it spin. I think with a hard top like what this has or or if you had some weight in the back you know like when you're going camping or whatever you a um, little more weight gives a little more traction. So yeah that's a rundown of the uh, Flexitor suspension.